Yeah, I don't know what the fuck going on. This is my fourth in our live. That's probably the best two songs I heard, flat out, hands down. When I get on this live, I'm going to call your phone, and we're okay. going to make sure that you get heard, because oh that shit you're doing. going to make me cry right now. That's crazy. <laughs> It's your boy Chubby Baby, man. Tune in right now to ANR Live. For exclusive content to be ANR and understanding the business, hit that subscribe button. What's up, world? ATL Beat Banger, DJ Toom, and you're watching ANR Live with my man Chubby Baby. Holla. Yeah, y'all talk that trap shit. We, we going to the trap for real yeah, we tonight. Take it down, man. We going there, How man, with my brother DJ Toom. You dig me? It's your boy Chubby Baby. You have now tuned in to okay. AR Live and you have now locked in, man. For all you artists out there, all you ARs, all you executives, I got the legendary DJ Toomp in the building. Man, so listen, man. Great to be here. Man, so, so this platform is based about for the ARs out there, man, that, you know, that wanna that wanna chime in and, 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 and find talent. You know, on this platform here, we, we, we play new artists on sign. If you if you hear something you like and you want to work with them, you can work with them. You know Damn what I'm right. saying? Damn right. But I, I just felt that the game was being a little lazy, so I wanted to bring something new to the new to the game and, and, and help the help the culture. So I started a and Live, you know Man, what I'm saying? we need this, bro, because I was just telling somebody recently, like, damn, where are all the showcases and, yeah. you know, places where – sometimes I get in the mood to watch you – we wanted to hit the town and hear some new right. shit, you know what I mean? See some new talent or just hear some new production or whatnot. But, um, you know, of course, everybody used to go to what? Crucial or whatnot? Yeah, you know? yeah, man. But, Mondays. Uh, but yeah, but That's shit, right. man, I was trying to figure out how out. So for the people that don't know, DJ Toomp is a uh, is a legendary producer, a big, a big staple in Atlanta. And tell these people where you're from, but they might not know where you're from. Oh, man, well, first, you know, once again, y'all, DJ Toomp, ATL Beat Banger, man, Southwest Atlanta, you know? Mm -hmm. On the Hugh Spalding Medical Center. <laughs> little medical center right across the street from Grady, you know. I, I was almost a Grady baby, but uh, they had to, they didn't have enough room for me, so they had to take me to Hugh Spalding. <laughs> Mom spit me up out of there back in 69, man, so. So, so quick question to, I want to ask the people, like, who inspired you to do music first? Like, what made you get into the music business? As far as, like, being a producer? Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I could say, um... When it comes to the inspiration, because I, 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 it'd be unfair for me to really just say how I led into that. Yeah. First thing I was inspired to do was be a DJ. Right. And um, saw Grandmaster Flash. That was back in like '81. Oh you know? yeah, that's you know, crazy. I'm hearing these little records and him. You know, he actually made a record with him scratching called uh, "The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on the Wizard Steel." I don't know if you remember that. You saved one for the trouble. Dude, for, for yeah, he started yeah. scratching good yeah. times and shit like that. So when I heard that record, man, I was trying to figure out how he did that shit. So I was trying doing it on a pause button. Yeah. And finally, when I found out that it was turntables that he was doing it on, man, I taught myself how to DJ or whatnot. My mom bought me a mixer. Dad bought me a turntable. And so that was my first mm. thing as far as really loving music mm. and being inspired as far as getting my record collection. Then I started making tapes. Then I started being known as a DJ, you know, DJ Tunk. That was, you know, from middle school and up. So after that... After playing so much music, I, eventually I learned how to create that shit, man. You know, right. and um, first artist I produced was Raheem the Dream. You know, Raheem the Dream. But, uh, I remember but, yeah, Raheem but, the Dream. But I was inspired production wise. Uh, I don't know if y'all know who Larry Smith is. Uh, he did a lot of no. Run DMC shit. He was incredible. A lot of old stuff for Houdini. Mm. It's an incredible producer. If y'all pull him up, it's a documentary on him too. Larry Smith. Once you see it, you'll be blown Larry away. Larry Smith, man. Okay, yeah. I, I, I gotta look. His credits into all him. over on some. You know, when you look at shit from the eighties. To the uh, yeah eighties the whole eighties era you know that was him yeah you know you know I'm fifty five yeah, I'm yeah. going on fifty five right. so you know I'm, I'm yeah but, still, yeah, but at the same so, time you still got to be a student yeah yeah so my my things are what what inspired me a lot of people may not even be familiar with it mm. you know that's why I'm like yeah just you know Google it <laughs> so, so quick question like how how do you how how do you start working with Ti how you got some beats to Ti man well I used to get down man and um uh, you know move around here getting extra money man my homeboy Tremel Morgan two but he rest in peace. That was uh, he happened to be cousins with Ti. He'd be like, man, I still want you to listen to my little cousin. Yeah. He'd be like, I, right. you know, I'm counting money, moving on. He's moving on. <laughs> and so um, finally, man, I gave him a, a, a chance. I was like, yo, bring him to the crib. Yeah. And uh, little skinny dude walking up the driveway, and I was blown away, bro. Once he put his cassette in, you know, 
had a little Nissan 300 ZX back then, and uh, he played me his demo. I fell in love with what I heard, man. His flow was incredible. Um, it was like, and I was like, where the hell you get this flow from? Kind of find out, you know, he's half New York, half, you know, yeah. Atlanta. You yeah, because people don't realize that, you know, T.I. family from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. And when I heard his flow, I was like, everybody, a lot of yeah. Don't rap like that, especially his yeah. age group. Yeah. Bit, you know what I mean? And he was like 18, 19. Yeah. Because I've been looking for an artist for a while. You know right. what I mean? So, right. Yeah, man. It took a minute. But, um, so, so quick, uh, off the grid question. Mm -hmm. um, you, have you ever like wanted to work with one of, one of your own artists? Like, you ever invested in one of the artists on your own? I've done it before. Um, I don't know if you remember the song. We, we had the first Do It With No Hands record. So, dude called Sugar Sugar. Do it with no hands. Oh, yeah? Do it with no hands. Yeah, we had that shit. It was regular rotation. We were playing in New York and everything. Then later on, people started making Do It With No Hands records. What? Yeah, we had it first. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, Sugar I, Sugar. I, I ain't on the second Do It No Hands. Right. No Hands records with Drummer Boy. Okay. And uh, uh, Walker and uh, yeah. Wale. Yeah, so we had the first one. Yeah. yeah. And um, another guy had a um, dude named Clarence Hines. We call him Jack Boner. I invested in him, you know. It almost took off. We had a song called Here Come Them Folks. I just played that shit recently. It was hard, bro, but we was kind of ahead of our time. So I, I took a little time and invested in artists, man, but um, that shit, you know, it, it's like some yeah. hit or miss. It's like, you know, yeah. playing the lottery type shit, you know? It's like gambling. So so the, my, the question I want to know is, man, how you got the Kanye joint? That's yo, that, that reggae right there. When I heard that and I heard you did that shit, I said... It's about the, the graduation album? Yeah. Man, listen, well, um, it's crazy because I had met Ye a while back um, when I was with uh, Big John. Yeah. But then later on, no, 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 no. You know what? No, I met Kanye when we were working on trap music. Yeah. Because, you know, he had three, four songs on trap music. Yeah. And that's when he was playing his music to us, you know, as far as his first album, just trying to get some approval from me, Tip, and Jason. Like, yeah. man, you know, tell me what y'all think of my shit. So we Shout really, out to Jason Jeter, man. Yeah, man. We heard that album before everybody. His first right. joint. I man, we was like, nigga, thumbs up. Nigga, you ready? I'm thinking he was all about beats. I didn't know he rhymed that good, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, just then. And uh, so we met. But like I say, little did I know that we'll be actually working together later on. So one time in New York, I was with Big John. And he was like, man, yay down at the studio. You know, let's just stop through and see what's happening. So I started playing with the ASR. Once he saw me, you know, I put something together in about cooked up one in like five, six minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, shit, man. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like that, you know? Yeah. You know, one day we'll catch up. And um, me and Jeezy had a song on his album called um, I Got Money. Oh, yeah. With him and T.I. Kanye wanted to get on that song, but then he wanted to remix it, too. So Jeezy put me and Kanye in conversation. Yeah. And it's wild because that what started off as a I Got Money remix turned oh, into... Oh, it turned into... Can't tell me nothing. Can't tell me nothing. That's until how that I happened. get my money, right? So, right. and um, like I say, Jeezy ended up jumping on the remix of that song. But um, just, you know, like I say, it started off as a remix. And once, once we saw that we had that chemistry, man, Kanye decided to come down here to Atlanta to work on the graduation album. Yeah. This shit with yours truly, you know? At first, I'm thinking mm. he's just down here looking for beats. Until mm. I noticed, like, he was like, yeah, man, come back tomorrow. Another day, he was like, come back tomorrow. So I'm thinking there's going to be other producers and come to find out. He was strictly down here to work with me. Yeah, that's crazy. Which was a, a blessing, man. And man, he worked on the graduation album, yeah. man. Yeah, so we had uh, Can't Tell Me Nothing, Good Life, and uh, Big Brother. Mm. Oh, yeah. Big, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, were, oh, you did the Big Brother Yeah, joint. I did Big Brother. He was like, yeah. the end, like, Toomp killed that shit. Yeah, yeah. Big, yeah, Big Brother was my favorite record on the album. Oh, man, get out of here. That yeah. was the last one, too. You, you, you know, uh, people don't realize, me and Cam, me and Cam worked with him for for a long time. Me and Cam would actually me, uh, go to Chicago to work and kick it with my with, with our family out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Happy, Don C, and Kanye would always come to our yeah, kick with us over the year. Okay. And we ended up doing the Snake for R. Kelly at that time. Remember the Snake remix? Snake. Yeah, me and Cam did the snake joint. I'm trying to remember how that song went. It was a, it, it, R. Kelly. Let me see you do the snake. It was like a snake song. He had, he had R. Kelly on it. I got to hear that R, shit again. R. Kelly, I'm trying to figure Cam, out. and he had Big Tig on it. That's the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Was Damn, boy, you might took me back with that one. Hell yeah, man. And then me and Cam actually was in the studio working with them, and... Me and Ye was like, yo, I don't like working over there. We was like, why? He said, 
<laughs> he said, because you can't smoke in there, and they're going to kick you out. So Cam smoked the blood in the side of the studio. The engineer said, yeah, I got to leave. So we left. And by the time we got to the jet, our Kelly homeboys and them came to the jet was like, yo, you got to smoke, man. Yeah, like we got to work this shit out. Yeah, yeah, we came yeah, back yeah. to the studio. But it actually worked out because that night we also met with DMX and did what's really good. Oh, wow. Damn, that's magic. Yeah, what's that's really magic. good of, of the... What's really that's good magic. we did that that night. That was that was all, all, all racing cars because DMX would love to race, right. race cars. That's what his thing. What yeah. you mean, like remote control? Yeah, he, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He, anyway, yeah, he got the remote control cars. So now in this new era, you know, Future just came and revolved and took over Drake, took over. Yeah, I'm going you know, to show that all these over guys, again. Yeah, these guys is like in this era. Who would you produce? Who would DJ Toon take like and make one of his faves? Man, if I could kidnap some of these cats, let me see. Uh, JID. Yeah, I, I love him. Uh, Twenty One. Exactly. Damani. Lil Damani. Um shit, there's a few more, man. Um, um who we? I can't think of them now, but it's a few of them. Yeah. As far as this new young squad, you know, it's a few yeah. of them. Yeah, I like uh I think I think uh twenty you know, twenty one you know, I discovered him, so it's mm -hmm. like And definitely future. Yeah. <laughs> Future's got the pain, he got the soul. He's representing the dungeon family on the next level right. To the now. fullest, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah. you gotta be proud of old Hendrix, man. He doing his thing. I love the chemistry that him and Twenty One got too. I, 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 that shit's I, sick. I feel like you know the uh, the the era and the, and the time when I came down here, I got I, it was just the right timing for me to. For me yeah, to, I finna say that's when you was yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and, and I started a few things and, around that yeah yeah starting him and you know discovering Twenty One and see where them two guys is at right. I should like I did my justice for Atlanta. Dope. You yeah, nah, I mean? nah. You brought some, you brought some fire down here, yeah, bro. Man. Yeah, we fuss with you. We couldn't do nothing but embrace. Ain't no re room for no hate. Anybody hating on you, let me know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Hey, man. I, it's it's all about having the ear, having taste, yep. and you know, that's it, man. Well, how you see the future in the music business right now? Who the future in the music business? Well. What I would love to see in the future is that they are streaming rates, you know, royalty rates, you know, they raise yeah, those up a little yeah. bit. I heard there's been conversation uh, last week about it, you know. Yeah, I heard that too. Recently, you know. But we, we and, ain't uh, seen nothing yet. And it's funny, though, I remember Donald Trump, when he was in office, he was talking about it at one point. It's <laughs> funny, man, how he just do certain shit to get the community, right? Yeah. You know, sneakers, let me talk about royalty rates. Trump Trump know what to hit. Nah, he, he pimping. I, 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 I love him. I love how he, he moves. Hey, listen, man, I, I tell people all the time, man, Trump is for the black people. They, 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 they can say he ain't, but he is. Yeah, folks be hating on Trump. Yeah. I fuss with I don't Trump. hate on Trump, man. Yeah, you know what it is? I fuss with You know Trump what it is? Too. I can just tell you the real. People hate on people from New York, period. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, New York folks used yeah, to be. Yeah, because you know, he's so New forward. York folks used to kind of yeah. look down on the Southern folks, you know. Yeah, you know? but you know what I told someone? I just told this on Jasper in my last interview. I'm like, yo, I love Atlanta. Like, yo, you know, yo, like, yeah, I think Can first album, yeah. Jermaine Dupri produced half of it, damn Oh, man. yeah. But see, what's funny, a lot of New York cats, they would look at the South a certain way, but then when they get down here for about a good two years, man, they fall in love with this Man, listen, we was coming down here, you got to remember, Cam with the bone crusher. Right. You know, like, like, like we was, we was like. Oh, y'all making y'all rounds out here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, man, we was coming down here. I was, you know, I was down here in 99, so, you know, Mace was here, yeah. you know, then, K, then me and Cam were coming down here. Yeah, because Mace was talking about what, so-so deaf, right? Yeah, you know him yeah. and JD, him yeah. and JD have been tight. Right. But you gotta think that from Lance Rivera had his own relationship with through Biggie mm -hmm. with Jermaine Dupri. Okay. And you gotta think that's how Cam got all them Jermaine Dupri records. He you gotta think Cam had Usher on his first album. Right. Destiny Child. Yeah, that is so good. Yeah, yeah. that was Usher singing that. Yeah, yeah, Usher singing that. So you know, we always had that South, you know, feeling because. We fuck, and I always tell people this: Jermaine Dupri was the first Southern producer to embrace diplomats. Want me to tell you though? I always said that Dipset was some country New York niggas, man. I yeah. say that shit all the time. Yeah. I say them niggas, some New York niggas, but they kind of got this country in the tone. <laughs> like that little. You know why? Because I had Cam in the Midwest with me. 
Okay. You know what I mean? I had Ken with me in Ohio. In Ohio, yeah. And I used to be telling him, he like, yo, he... he I don't uh, know, so I'm an Ohio player now. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, there's some big I mean, players I know when I bring your name up. Yeah, they stamp you. Yeah, there's some man, real players man, from man, your listen, way. you can't... Ain't nobody in Ohio can't stand, can't yeah. mention mention it without my name. You know yeah, why? Right. Because I put it on my back, Bone Thugs yeah. and Harmony, and then it was me. Then it was LeBron James. Damn right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and I tell people all the time, I brought Cam and Lil Wayne out there. They had them living with me in Ohio. Nice. And I told Cam, I said we were at my birthday party, March twenty one twelve. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest club in New York City, mm. and it was our birthday weekend, and Cash Money was in there. And I told Cam, I said, yo, we got to fuck with those niggas. Mm. He said, why? I said, they fish grease in Ohio. I said, all we listen to is BG and shoot at niggas. And you see they moving, man. They was moving. moving. You listen, BG yeah. had that, I'm a soldier. That shit come on, man, the club. Man, it was, it was, it was, it was, it, it, it lose their mind. Straight from and, damn Louisiana, And Master boy. P was crazy too. So if you notice how he was on the diplomat side, Cam did the Cam took the Ohio uh uh, uh Oregon's and mm -hmm. who did the faves and put him in his music. We did battle battle with Master P. Okay. Brought Master P to Harlem. That's hard. You know what I mean? People don't realize a lot of that stuff. So we always had the South in the South. When I came down to the South, me and Jim, to work with Polo, I was already like, yo, I'm staying. Mm. Fell in love with I this already knew it was going on because I just said, damn, we just came from LA. And we was in Jimmy Iovine's office, and I'm like, who's this guy with the with the cornrows? They they all talking to him. It was Polo. Oh, Jamal, Jamal yeah. Jones. So Hell we yeah. got to, so we had brought Jim down to get on a Walk It Out remix, and 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 throw some D's remix. Nice. We did them two songs that day. Jim was on fire. I think balling, going crazy. We did them records. I moved down here, stayed here. And I stayed with Polo for six months. Nice. And in the mix of six months, that's how I did turning me on, turning me on for Kerry Hills and went on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did, uh, back to the crib, Jewels and Chris Brown. Boy, came for, out here uh, putting in work. Drop it low, look, Esther Dean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lil Wayne. And uh, I used my research. Esther resources. Dean, how's she doing, man? Man, she rich. <laughs> I was gonna say, man, she put in she, some fucking yeah, work. Yeah, she, but she's doing scores and on the movies and stuff okay. now. So, okay. you know, she getting paid three fifty a. Uh, Four, five, five, five hundred a movie, just to just to put her vocals on, you know. We went to dinner with last time I was in, a year ago. Was in L.A. She me and her went to dinner. We get my motherfucker singing on, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, but you and then you know, Picture Perfect. She's like, she's actually a part of that movie. With all okay. the, the musical, yeah, she's a part of it of the so, movie itself. Okay. Yeah, so just to see her where she's evolved, and that's somebody that I helped break. Right. People, I'd be like, yo, man, that's, that's amazing, man. Yeah, bro. It got to feel mean? good. You so so right. that's why I say I love Atlanta because Atlanta evolved my music career. Right. You know, coming to see y'all working with you. Yeah, man. T.I. Yo, T.I. opened his door for me and and, and let me work there at the studio for free. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. And even on the female artist, I broke light skin Keisha. Look at her, and then and now she's on TV doing movies. Right. I mean, that's doing dope. television. Yeah. Like nobody that's would dope. know what that is. Like you know. Uh, any female artists you working with? No, nah, none. I don't have it. Um, mm -mm, haven't ran into. I'm gonna tell y'all girls out there. <laughs> if y'all, if y'all, if y'all want to get a hit, a real hit, y'all better go see two. I damn sure got it. All you girls, if y'all still on that somebody ratchet shit, let's go, baby. Yeah, listen, I, got a gang I tell people all the time, the DJ, the DJ is the one, and people don't realize this, and I say this on camera. Me and Future would be nowhere without DJ Esco. Come on, man. And DJ escalated. We wouldn't be nowhere. Those two guys broke us. Yeah, DJ play a major part. Bro. The DJ plays the major role. See, that's man. some shit I've been raising hell about around here lately, though. Is um, that's what really made put Atlanta, really the South period, but especially Atlanta. What really put Atlanta on the map is when when we just really start kicking ass. I'll say around like early two thousands. Yeah, it's this radio support from the DJs, man. Yeah, so it's like even when you wasn't signed, right. you know, you were still yeah, had a man. chance to get your shit heard Listen, on the mix shows at least, you know. You know that was the reason why you could get broke more in the south than up north, right? Because up north they just played the classical artists. Yeah, and down here, if you had a hundred, you had two hundred dollars, a hundred dollars in a yeah. hot record, and you gave it to the DJ, he gonna play. <clears throat> 
So what you think is going on now, man? It's fucked up right now, though, I think. Man, well, right now, man, social media is just really taking over. The the the, the oh, it's, oh, it's overshadowing the music. Mm. We get we getting distracted. As yeah, a, radio as the still culture, important, man. The culture is getting distracted, and shit, they just fight all the DJ, uh, fight all the radio reps, right? Right. So now they're gonna be hustling because they got to take care of their families, right? Right. right. They're gonna be outside figuring out what's going on. So what we'll see next year, what we'll see next year in this business, is a bunch of new artists is breaking because everybody now is about to have the hustle. And you know what? And the thing about it, from technology and social media, I can, uh, but like going back to the question, because when you said that, that just went back to it, like you were talking about the future of music. I could definitely see is uh, see more independent artists yeah. surfacing, man, because and you got a, a generation who's having a chance to see a killer mic, yeah, a chance to rap and a long list of other ones, you know, to really. You could run a fucking record company from your house now just by hitting enter. Once you hit enter, the whole world got your shit. You ain't got yeah. to go with no pressing plants no That's more. Right. See, I come from all that. Having to send the artwork to Canada right. to get the CDs printed up. Man, all those days are it, gone. It's somewhere. in front of you now. It's in front of you. Yeah. It's in your phone. And we yeah. need it. The labels got to... The labels are making more profit than ever. Mm. But at the same time, they're getting over. Yeah. Because they're, not, because they're paying the cheapest a rs they just they hire, they're not even hiring ain't ours no more. They're just hiring people to do research. Mm. And research is I just you know, watch the computer and watch numbers. Hey, my son could do that if I wanted to, but he discovered Twenty One Savage. Funny that you said that word. He he the one that made me sound Twenty One Savage and Cody Shane. That, they like, would just go get that dude. She, yeah. Okay. It's funny because uh, what my boy Dash? He was trying to get Twenty One. He was trying. Oh yeah, but, yeah Dash, man, yeah. Dash, you, you, Dash, you know you you was beat. <laughs> Dash, yeah, Dash, Dash came in, man. Boy. Dash ain't from Atlanta, but you know at the same right. time, I went in the yeah, nine and got time. that kid. Yeah, nah, you gotta yeah. understand this, man. Made that happen. I, I, I went in the middle of the nine and, and grabbed him and Metro out of there nice. and told him get in the car and come with me. I'm gonna change your life. That's gangster. And uh, I love it. I helped man. him change his life. I love and it. I, I, I just kept my word. That's that's at the end of the day when you sign somebody, you fight for them, and you make sure that they 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 situate in the building. Because it's a bigger fight in the inside, mm -hmm. you know. And um, that was a perfect example of us, you know, when we first, you know, did a tip deal. You know, he was with Arista LaFace. Yeah. So KP was the A and R, and LA was the CEO. That's right. So when KP left and LA left, man, it was like we were just stuck on an island. That's we had right. to get the hell on, man. Right. And that's why we took it to Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. So you you got any advice for these upcoming artists? Advice, advice. Upcoming artists, producers, come on, y'all, man. Let's bring some more originality, man. I, I, I want to hear nobody That's sounding right. like the next man, you know? We got enough futures out there. <laughs> we got enough 21s. You know, it's, it's hard for somebody to bite 21, though. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he, he actually used his tone, you know what I mean? Listen, that kid voice is amazing. Yeah, man. so, um, yeah, man, let's just keep that originality, man, as far as the producers and everybody, you know, don't... Don't feel that you got to sound like the next man to get accepted out here. You know, that's going for everybody, man. Yeah. You know, singers, rappers, producers, everybody. Yeah, because I, I feel like, you know, you have to find... Somebody asked me, how do I become an A&R? And I kept it real with him. I said, find something that's dope. Mm -hmm. Stamp it. Mm -hmm. If you could do that once, twice, three times, yeah, you're good to go. And I would love to see, yeah, you're right. And I would love to see this shit get to the point where, let's say, um, I could just gauge it off the Grammys. You know, in my era, when you watched the Grammys, you didn't know who was going to win. You didn't know who was going to win. Because there were so many super superstars in the building. That's right. right. You know what I mean? The way you didn't know it was going to be. Outcast uh, or Jay Z, yeah, or or even in the R and B shit, you ain't know if it's gonna be Whitney, Mariah, right. Patti Labelle. It was just a whole gang of people, so many stars and people who had shit on the charts to where right. you don't know. Nobody didn't really outshine each other, and everybody had their uniqueness. And that hip hop was like that too, right? You know what I mean? Yep. So now it's hard to even tell where cats are from, you know? Yep. You know everybody. You know, I'm, I'm kind of. I would love to see you know, 
I respect the West Coast guys who still keep it West Coast. That's right. You know what I mean? La Russell yeah. and the rest of them. Yeah, man. And, I like know, him. Yeah, I like La Russell. I, like I love him. his hustle, too. His yeah. grind is a motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, you I got like him. You got youngins who are watching his grind. It's like, hey, man, hold on. We really can do this Don, shit. Don Kennedy, I like him. Yep, all of them. Yeah. yeah. And so, honestly, I can see right now this turning, you know, of course, y'all, you know, make sure you take yourself to school, you know, like, get some books and learn about the industry. I understand how to get paid in this shit more than just learning how to put out records. Learn yeah. how to eat. You know what I mean? So and, and, and that's that way you can be a businessman out here running your own shit. And that's real. what we doing here, man, with this platform. You know, shout out to Lil Donald. I see you in there, man. Yeah, I fucks with Lil Donald. What's up, Lil Donald? I signed him, yeah. man. You know, oh, I, sure signed, I, I signed him to Epic, man. Yeah. Yeah, me and Future did his deal. It's crazy. You know I ain't mean? never met dog. I ain't yeah, met man. dog yet, but first, I fuck his with first his energy, deal. man. And, yeah. and I seen how he matured in the business. I got him his first deal, man, and I, yeah. I took him to New York, man. We, me and him, we kicked it, man, and you know, good, intelligent kid, yeah, man. Yeah, that's somebody I would love to get in with you know too, man. I, mean? I had to pull up, I had to pull up on you, Donald. Holla at your yeah, boy, man. Yeah, little Donald, shit, man. I come you know, through there, see what you doing, and shit. I go through my playlist. I know yeah. it's a magic. Yeah, I fuck yeah, with little Donald. Yeah, man, love for life with little Donald, man. Yeah, and, and, and people don't even know. I don't even talk about that kind of them, them deals, like and it's kids like him that I that that I did his deal, and, and you know, told L.A. Reid like. These, these are the guys that we're going to sign in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're going to change the game, let's change it in the core of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's change the core of the business. And that's what a &R Live is about. a &R Live is about finding talent. Hey, look, I don't have no attachment to none of these artists, right? <laughs> right. But let me tell you what only thing I, my dream is to see an artist get signed off this platform. And I want to say them, I want to hear them say, where did you get discovered at? Of A and R Live. Of A and R Live, yeah, that's hard. And once that happens, this platform will be for every artist's <laughs> dream, every songwriter's dream, every A and R's dream. And all the work that I, we've put in, us, me and my friends, my brothers, that we, you know, I slept, we slept on studio floors. We done did it all, man. And now for you guys, all y'all gotta do is pull your phone out and just tap in and listen. Yeah. It's That's way it. easier for y'all right now, y'all. I'm telling yeah, so you, y'all niggas got it made right now. Yeah, <laughs> we sat on, we stand on corners putting CDs out, man. Yeah, man. So I want, I want to thank my brother DJ Tunt for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, man, brother. This, this was a, a, a great moment, man. My Leo brother, man. Me and this guy right here. <laughs> Our birthdays are a day apart from each other, man. Yes, sir. Great minds think alike. You know what I mean? And, and, and we're gonna continue to make some money. Continue to push the culture. And continue to push A and R Live, and just do right by our people. There it is. That's right, man. Well, you got my full support, and, bro. That's right. Thank you, man. Next up, man, I got my boy Cortez Bryant. He's come, he's gonna stop by. And uh, if y'all know who Cortez Bryant is, man, stay tuned, man. Cause shit, that's that's little that's Lil Wayne's manager, Drake's manager, Nicki Minaj's yeah, manager. Cortez put out put, put some work in. He, out yeah, yeah man. Cortez put a lot of work in. He live here too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Nick's fall in love with the A, baby. When, and what I want to tell y'all is these guys are all DJs. Mm. Cortez was the DJ. I didn't know that. So we're gonna get into that with Cortez, man, when he get on the show. I wanted to say that while Toomp was here because Toomp is a DJ that <laughs> could, that that gave this Atlanta sound. Yeah, gotta understand that these guys gave this the music business a sound. Yes, so sir. all y'all out there that don't have don't have a sound, get a sound. That's what's gonna change the game. I'm Madness, bringing people man. on the show that have shifted the culture. Not just I can have anybody on there because because of who I am, but that's not what I want to do. If you notice, we didn't put no artists on the show yet. Hmm. We don't want them yet. It's right. not for them. It's for the people like him and me that that push the culture from behind the scenes. The ones who sit down and mold and. That's right. Print them out and get them right. Chisel them down to. All right, now that's you're right. ready for the world. There you go. Yeah. yeah so that type shit. That's it, man. Your boy Chubby Baby DJ Tomp. Ain't no lie. Love. We gonna play Denzel Davis first. How you doing? Can you hear me now? Yeah, you yeah. Me? What you said? Oh no, my name is Buggy. They call me Buggy. Uh, that's right, man. We got so we gonna tune in, man. We we listening to right. we listening to music with the artists, man. Let me know your feedback on the artists. All right, sounds good. Denzel man. Davis, the first artist. What's the What's the song? What's the song called? I digged it. First song is called I Digged It. All right. 
I love good pussy, I smoke good weed. Good Only way. love the money, but your sex what I need. What your I love need. got me addicted. Yeah, your love got me addicted. I love good pussy, I smoke good weed. Good Only way. love the money, but your sex what I need. What your I love need. got me addicted. Yeah, your love got me addicted. I be drooling for your jewels, I ain't talking no diplomatic. She tell me pull up, no hezzy, it's automatic. Seeing in the person is better than cinematic. I be on that demon time, shorty think I'm satanic. You really got me stuck, I ain't trying to be so dramatic. I hear that thing leaking, well, baby, I'm your mechanic. Pussy dripping wet, I got a wet like the Atlantic. You know I love to go swimming, I go deep like Titanic. I got this shit on lock when it's pressure, I never panic. Best believe we smoking that fire, yeah, that volcanic. Damn, everything natural, I'm talking baby organic. She do a couple tricks on the dick, she acrobatic. She fucked me so good, got me crazy like a fanatic. Ooh, damn, want well, all the smoke in the static. I ain't never been as happy, you really got me ecstatic. I put it on God, that pussy turned me an I love good pussy, I smoke good weed. Only love the money, but your sex what I need. Your love got me addicted. Yeah, your love got me addicted. Got me addicted. I look good, pussy. I smoke. What you think about that one? Okay. Yeah. That ain't bad. What you thinking, man? Yeah, I fuck with it. Mess with it, all right. Yeah, I fuck with it. The second one is called, what, Be South? Did I say it right? Hey, real quick, man. Chubbs. I'm at a point right now, baby. Word. Hey, I sent in two songs. I am going to play for you, dog. Too busy right. in the bag, you feel me? I don't really want shit with them hoes Seven figure nigga in the trap getting dope Made it from the bottom, you know how this life goes Always living fast, I be with my woes I don't really want shit with them hoes Seven figure nigga in the trap getting dope Made it from the bottom, you know how this life goes Always living fast, I be with my woes We better bring that record back in about five, four, three, two. One. Shit, I'm at a point right now, baby, where I ain't got the time to watch. I don't know what this song is, we playing it. Too busy getting a bag, you feel me? It's the same guy. So you just got to get in line. I like this shit, too. I don't really want shit with them hoes. I don't think they're Jim Jones, bro. Made it from the bottom, you know how this life goes. I don't want you with them hoes. There we go. Playing in the snow, gotta keep my shit together. I'll be macking like a pro, stacking up these dollars off the henny still flow. Made it out the struggle, now you looking at the goat. When it comes to a bitch, I need the pussy in the throat. Let me hit Pablo for the plug, you can get it low. Got packs of that moat, that little bro got the blow. You need it right now, little baby, let me know. I ain't talking to no suckers, keep it solid on my toes. Play with my name is 40, rearrange your nose. Understand again, I'm putting no hoes before your woes. I never rush things, I was going with the flow. Gotta charge it to the game. You know how this gang go. I don't really bullshit with them hoes. Stop a figure nigga in the trap getting dope. Made it from the bottom, you know how this life goes. Always living fast, I be with my woes. I don't really bullshit with them hoes. Stop a figure nigga in the trap getting dope. Made it from the bottom, you know how this life goes. Always living fast, I be with my woes. I'm really fucking with this. This is this is hard. I like this kid. He, he reminds me of like, he, he, he sound he could be on Bird Game. But tell Jim Jones sign him, man. Jimmy Jones sign him. Sign him. So next one we gonna deal with is Baby Phase. Better on my mind. Let's go. Better on my mind with that time. Boy. 
I liked it that. That was actually kind of dope. What you think about that record, man? Nice, man. Sounding good. Yeah, she sound good, right? Yeah. All right, man. You ain't on right now, man. We got to see what you think, man. This artist's name yeah, is I like Phase. Yeah, I like it. I'm rocking with it. So th this one is called Out My Mind. This is the second song. It's called Out My Mind. Sign this. Hey, listen, man. I don't know where that girl at or who she is or who she signed to, but that song was a hit right there, man. I'm telling you, if you ain't on you out there, man, you need it. She need to drop a comment, and y'all need to sign her immediately. If not, I'm gonna sign her. She sound good, man. I mean, she sound good for the DJs. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah, it's, that was it's a straight. vibe right there, man. It's it's straight. It's that's that's one of them easy joints. Man. What was her DJ name again? Stuff. Cricket, baby face, yeah, baby face. Where you at? We want we 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 want to tap in. All right, who's next? All right, next is okay, okay, boogie, buggy, instant insanity. Oh, buggy, you were just on Facetime with us. That's right. Yeah, okay, you just. Right, let's buggy. Let's see what's going on, man. Play. Let's see what buggy got going on. Fly time. What's up, girl? Thank you. Hold on, we gotta run that back, man. 
Please, hey, run that run, thing. Run that, run that back, man. Fire, bro. Run that back, Tariq. Run that back, Tariq. What's up, Reek? Ah, Reek in love. That boy Reek in love, my That's crazy. This is this shit jamming. I ain't gonna hold you. We might have to put uh, this out. So we gonna go huh? to your we gonna go to your next record, man. Sure. It's called Miss. Sure. Uh, okay, Miss Misplaced. Okay. Oh word. Okay, that's my acoustic joint. I uh, did. Oh, yeah. oh, you go. You in acoustic with it? Oh yeah, I play guitar, piano, oh, drums. Shit. I mix Hold and master. I make my beats. I, do I got my popcorn. Thing. I'm sitting right here. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Turn me up, Tariq. Let's go. <laughs> I try to be is tragic thing. This ain't all I was about, man. See how she see her reaction? See her reaction? This is this is what this, this is what this is this about. Yes, sir. This, this, this shit is fire right here. You better get on y'all shit. This shit for real. Tell you this, man. Yes, sir. I, this is my fourth in our live, right? <laughs> and that's probably the best song I've heard. The really? best two songs I heard, flat out, hands wow. down. You are fucking amazing. Let me tell you something. Wow. When I get on this live, I'm gonna call your phone, and we're okay. gonna make sure that you get heard. Oh my God! Please don't make me cry right now. That's crazy. No, listen. I swear to God, dude, that shit is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so that much. That shit sounds beautiful, man. That music sounds so beautiful. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. too. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I was trying to sit in a couple of things before, but I'm glad you finally got to hear the stuff. Now I'm. I'm so hey, man, you, you, got, you, you got to thank Riel, man, and Tariq. Yeah, big hey man, bring this my brother man. I'm just hearing it right now. I don't know what the fuck going on. Uh, until yeah. I see the chair, and I heard this, I said, "Oh my god!" Wow, thank you so so much. I'm speechless. You're a fucking, I'm so glad you like it. Star. Thank you. Don't worry about it. We got you. Ain't our live. We're gonna, gonna get you going. That's it. We, let's go. Let's, let's go, go, man. <laughs> big, a hey, big show, not the little one. The big, big one, not the little one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Ah, I fucked with her, man. I'm, I'm... <laughs> so, so, so you you can stick around if you want. We gonna play some more artists, man. But Let's you, go. Like I'm in here. I'm in here. My man Kev, yes, Kev, what's up, Kev Law? He got a song <laughs> called Plan. Let's see what he got going on, man. He said Let's he got go. the plan, so we are gonna see if he got the plan. Turn right. up, Tariq. He got the plan. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, he went and got one of my favorite little samples. Hey. 
They come with some heat now. Take it hard, Hey, somebody in here? Yo. Somebody. I just want to take a glance at you, baby. Take it hard, they go cane in the face. Try to pull up on me, I got plans for you, baby. Take you out the hunter, put you right in the Mercedes. I can like you, make a nigga want to give it to you. So tell them niggas ain't no reason that they're looking for you. Got you falling in love, so I'm feeling the lust. Say you been hurt and want to know about a nigga to trust. Or you just a chick that I've been itching to fuck. The tripping, baby, just know I've been fishing in this. Fly you to the moon, baby, see the world, baby. That's the move, baby, making love all in the sand. Do it again, baby, by the beach, going deep. Show me you're in a freak, I'm a leak, call me Zeke. The legend like Willie D. Well, money, want to ball for you. Just so you can tell your friends I did it all for you. Want to shower you with love and take the pain from you. Sex good enough, I bet you say my name, baby. Girl, tonight I got some plans for you, baby, for you, baby. Bend it up and make it dance for you. Man, I'm on goddamn. I feel bad. on my goddamn. All this time, dog. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that that was. Hey, That's listen. Five. That I was like my that. boy. That was a hard joint. That's yeah. hard. I so like my it. my brother just walked in, man. He, he he's a little late, man. But oh, yeah, late man. is I'm, never the problem. I'm, I'm, I'm apologize, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh I got, man. So you gonna get what I test to go? Live on my show? Yeah. yeah. You, okay. I'm yeah. Play, play Cam's second song, Debo, yeah. Run, run, run it so I, while we're getting chairs together. Hey, this this girl right here? Yeah. Oh, my God. She got to stay on. Listen, I swear to God. Listen, crazy. Listen. Tracy Chapman. Voice like that? I swear to God. I swear to God. Wow. I said, I, this is my fourth point doing it, right? I said, fuck everybody else. This is what you can tell me. Okay. Are you on? I got to tap in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so look, we got, I got to go live with my with my partner, but we, I'm a D, DM me right now. I've been up to Trinity topic, I got motion, bitch, we poppin', know these niggas got shit, man. Yeah. Keep that damn with me, that shit come with extras. I ain't a killer, homie, don't make me a pressure. Do it bigger than Trentino. Alright, so I'm 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 about to click off for her. Yeah. I can't see the coach. Hold on. Your girl's still on. Well, I guess you got a question. Hold on, I'm going to go to Cortez now. I got it. There you go. Are you on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right, man, so y'all now have tuned in to a and Live. You know, we have a special guest today. Yes, sir. My brother, long time coming, Cortez Bryant, man. What's up, yes, man? Yes, sir. What's up, baby? Yeah. I'm good, man. I'm man. here, brother. Man, so I, I, I felt like, you know, this platform I'm doing now is just a... I'm setting up something for the a and R's to reach out to, to to the artists and to the songwriters and producers, just giving us a platform where we all can socialize at. You know what I mean? And right. I don't I don't own nobody's music on this site, but I just want people to get heard and to get discovered. That's where that's amazing, bro. You know what I mean? So yeah. if I, they say yeah, how you got a deal, and the artist can say, I got found off a and R live. Yeah, that's big for us. So you bringing all the worlds together. That's right. That's hard. You know what I mean, and I and, and and I don't think nobody's ever did that before. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, what I want to do hard. is we here. Yeah. It's my it's my guy right here. We go way way back, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. So Cortez, man, what you working on, man? Bro, um, actually, what's exciting me right now, um, is um um. Uh, this guy out of uh, uh, California, Compton Cowboys, mm. Uh, mm. Randy Savvy. So it's uh, street country. Wow. So that country wave that's happening. Yeah. You know, um, 
I mean, I thank Beyonce for shining a mm. light on it, but you know, it's about a, uh, um, shit, um, about a month, a couple months though before mm. all this wave happened. I c- kind of got on the wave, man, uh, and I got on it because good. you know, for me, and I think the DNA of what I do is a uh, on the management side, and even how I look at the clients I work with is, you know, I, I don't consider myself as a uh, you know, I don't look at them as artists. I look at them as brands and right. real brands. So what excited me the most was, you know, the brand that was already established. You know, right. you got a ranch right in the hood. Wow. In Compton. So it's auntie in the 80s. You got horses and stuff? He a real cowboy. He, he, yeah. That nigga getting up and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and doing real cowboy shit, putting it to work. You know what I'm saying? But they take they take kids out the streets, out the hood, and teach them their mm. equestrian lifestyle. So I was attracted to the harder the story, the brands. I, I could do something. I could do something with this. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then it was challenging. It's something new, a new lane, street yeah, country. Yeah. I'm like, let me go yeah. over here on this other side to see. Yeah, man. I you mean, know, you ain't doing nothing wrong. What you I can, can do you can't here. do it. Yeah, yeah. Shit, so. You done did it. Shit, if you do it once, you can do it twice. You can do it twice. You can do it every yeah. time you put your your mind to it, man. Yeah. So he got some music coming out. Uh, yeah. Shit, next couple man. months. Yeah. yeah. So next next time on the show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play one of his records, man. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I, play, I, I like to play, a, I call it an A&R pick. Yeah. So I like to listen to songs that I like. Yeah. And I play them. So to get, to, let me tell you, the, the new thing that we're doing, every uh, so every 60 days, mm-hmm. I'm going to put out an A&R Live compilation. Okay. So the songs that people have, have played on the show Smart. that we think we like, put it we're going gonna to put it out for them. Yeah. Put it out, get it behind them. Get get and behind it, it and on. let it and let it go. That's what you know what I mean? Yeah. So so the, so ain't our live is a little more than just you know getting discovered, man. We help pushing artists too and help getting it out there. Help getting out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So using my platform and my expertise and all my people and my resources, like people want to hear you talk, right? Yeah. So we we want to get a couple of questions, like uh, so I want to tell people like where are you from. People don't, for the people that don't know, they just know Cortez. Yeah. But they don't really know who, where you from. I do. I'm but born they, and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, baby. Yeah. That's right. Born and raised. That's where I'm from, man. And, yeah. and, and, and what college you went to? Jackson Tell State him. University. I, Tell I, him. I, you I, I, I rap this all goddamn <laughs> oh, day, right. man. Jackson State that's all right. day that long. Boy, rap all day. Heavily rep it, bro. Yeah, did that, you know. So, so the special thing why I had you come today, uh-huh. because I just had DJ Toomp here, right? Okay. And DJ Toomp. Is a DJ, right? A lot of people don't know that you did DJ. I DJ too. Yeah, I did you everything. DJ. <laughs> the guys behind the scene that yeah. DJ and put the work in, they didn't understand. So ex- yeah. explain to them how long you've been DJing. I mean, shit. That's when Wayne called me. So I was at Jackson State. You know, mm-hmm. me and Wayne been friends since way before this. Growing up in New Orleans together, Wayne, Little Wayne, for the people that don't know, um, and you know. When he as he was taking his music journey, I decided to go to school with the college and shit. And right. right when I was graduating, he called me because he ain't never had no manager or anything. You right. know? So what that ha- what happened was, you know, he ain't never, really never had nobody. He just had cash money, kind of overseeing and doing all his business at the time. And um, from that, when we was building everything from scratch, I had all the jobs. And I was security, I was assistant, <laughs> I was DJ. You know what I'm saying? So. We was getting out the mud, so it was just like literally two, three people on the road, me, him, and our little homie Ma. Right. Um, that was it, bro. Like from the beginning till we started really, you know, getting some bags and getting some money. And as 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 I started doing that, I started expanding to a point, you know. This we is got, Hot Boy era. This is not Hot Boy era. This is 2004. Right. So okay. that was the first time, like Wayne, even though he had two platinum albums before mm-hmm. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't never had no representation ever. Yeah. Like before yeah, that, we yeah, had our crew, we had squad up, we had the crew, like we had movements like before that time yeah. as a crew. You know what I'm saying? Guy but it wasn't no up. real structure. Yeah. Yeah, fee, fee. You know what I'm saying? So we were structuring things around that time, but you know, to really uh uh you know, uh pop everything off after that kinda happened for me. Yeah. For me in 2004. Shit, Fee was not. Actually, Fee was actually DJing before me. Yeah, Fee. I was about to say, Fee, Fee was, was DJing, DJing before me. And I saw, you know, and, and I, when I come in, I, I jumped in that. Uh, I, I, I was dealing with Mac Main. Uh, uh, just had came home. Yeah, Mac and came. He, he met us in Ohio. Yeah, Mac came in oh, right that same, right that same year. Oh, yeah. 05, oh, 04, oh, 05. Yeah, yeah. What's, what, what's one of your most biggest moments in music? Shit, man. Um... You, you have a lot of them. <laughs> I, mean, I say this, bro. I think that 
with each with each of these artists, you know what I'm saying, when they come to me in the beginning with yeah. their dreams, like, yo, I want Tez, I want to do this, or Tez, uh, you know, when Drake came, it was like, yo, I want to be a superstar. You know, when they achieve those moments, it's probably my greatest moments, because that's what I right. kind of do it for, you know what I'm saying? I kind of, I do it, that's what gives me the most joy, making right. sure I for check those boxes for them, for to, you know, to to channel their dreams. So when Wayne hit that Grammy stage, right. you know, uh, and, and, and won three, four Grammys that day, you know, that was a highlight because, you know, I know that's something that uh, when you talk about at that point, he had put in a lot of work. Yes. So from being a kid to, you know, so, uh, uh, and I know at that point for him, it felt like he was being validated yes. by the entire industry, you yes. know what I'm saying, by putting in the work and, and, and grinding on the chilling circuit, and, you know, after all that time. So I know that was, like, probably my first, you know, yeah. and, and as the artist So what, what song got him the Grammy? Uh, the Carter Three album. Yeah, the Carter so Three album. So we were rap album, you know, and, and, yeah. And, and, and guess what? So crazy. Yeah. We did that album, the Carter Three album, got done at Hot Beats. At Hot Beats, right out here. Hot Beats is where you, uh, I got my relationship with Wayne. I mean, not with Wayne, with, uh, with Drake. Yeah, uh, Nikki, oh, and, and, all and, them. And, and we did a lot of stuff there. They was in boot camp back then. Camp Drake back and Nikki was in boot camp back then. Yeah, that was that was that was some great times, man. And and, uh, and Wayne, I mean Wayne got to argue with me one day. I said I'm going to the club. He said for what? Stay here. <laughs> he said you don't need to go to the club. They ain't paying you. I said I'm going to have some fun. He said no, fun is right here, recording. Yeah. And you know that's my brother. You know? Yeah, that's why you know. Lil Wayne and uh, Tez, they've been in my corner even since day one. You know, uh, I tell people all the time, Lil Wayne was the first artist to ever rap on a song. Me being a dope boy coming out the street, yeah. my first song, Lil Wayne was the feature on it. Yeah. This was 2007. Yeah. Fish Grease Wayne. That's yes. what we call him. Fish Grease. Fish Grease was, was hot. And, yeah. Ooh, yeah. And he made Jewels and Cam and him take me serious Yeah. as a rapper. And so I always... Tell Lil Wayne, like, you know, thank you. You know, thank you for believing in me. And, you know, just sh saying my name in a song. He just, and back then it was a mixtape era, so that shit meant a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm with Midwest Chubby. That shit went, that shit took me to a whole nother level. That shit, because Wayne knew what I was doing in Ohio. He knew he he knew how strong I was there. Oh yeah, we and appreciate what, all we appreciate all the love and and, and, and support and protection we got when we stepped in <laughs> and, we, and we stepped in Ohio. Man, you know what I'm saying? On, it was I just was, it was just real niggas, man. Real, like man. doing real things. You That's know what I'm right, saying? Man. We we were built off relationships and we built that relationship. Every time we stepped in Ohio, it was love. The red carpet was out. You need anything, anything. You know what I'm saying? That's right, man. If shit go left, we, we got. I got it. Anything, nothing gonna happen. Y'all good? Man, we did. Uh, we did LeBron's uh, 21st birthday party. Yes, dog. That That's was crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy, yeah. that was a crazy moment. Yeah. And for 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 Little Wayne, uh, you know, getting me to that relationship with Polo. You know, that night, six in the morning, six in the morning, I called Lil Wayne, and I said, "Hey man, I need you to get on this record, man." He was like, "What?" He said, it's a record called this girl named Carrie Hilson. We about to break her, and let's go about to break her. It's Polo's artist and Timberland's artist, and they want you on the song. They don't, they ain't know you. They said, "That's why I'm calling you." He said, "I got you, bruh. I went and gave Polo the phone. I said, "It's Lil Wayne." Polo looked at me like a ghost was on. Like, what? <laughs> like, it's Wayne. Wayne said, "Yo, what's up, love?" He said, "Yo, you with?" He said, "You got my brother there." I'm like, "It's Tune." He like, "Tune." I'm like, "It's Wayne." Like, we call, you know, we call him Wayne Tune, but he 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 didn't understand what was going on. But Wayne did the song four times in that same night. Yeah, I remember he called me the next. day. <laughs> he called me the next day. He's like, "Man, you know." He's like, "Man, you know this nigga, baby," because he don't usually do that. Yeah, he don't usually. That's the relationship capital is value, dog. Like for Chubby, oh my God. he talk about going in back in and going in and, and yeah, redoing I mean, my heart something. Dropped. <laughs> Why did be like, he man? He was like, no, it's not good enough. I'm yeah, like, he called me the next because like, usually what? I get the calls in the morning, yeah. early in the morning, just leave, leave the studio. That's when we usually start our day, go over, you know what I'm saying, yeah. anything we need. <laughs> he leaves it. So he called me. He was like, yeah, man, you know, you know. He was like, Chubby, man, you know, I don't just do this, but this is something here, Polo, man. We, we got him. I did the song last night, but it was for Chubby. <laughs> he hey, made hey, me hey, cut hey. that shit off all the time. Hey, I'm like, was, was it hard? It, it was it hard? He's like, I'm gonna send it to you. He sent it to me. Yeah. I was like, ooh. I was like, this is nasty right here. This is hit. crazy. Hit. We took carry on tour and everything. 
hit. Yeah. Hit, See, I, so, you know, before I, I got my, my young producer here, Trey Beats. He, he, he was a part of the Can't Feel My Face project. He did uh, Lean and Low. Oh, oh that's you know what crazy. I mean? And, 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 and uh, yeah, you know, that, was, we, we, that, was, that was a special record. Yeah. That 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 we we had man, hey man, Joel's me and Lil Wayne just had like a real brotherhood man. He took me on the road with him, you know what I mean? You and him, and man, I just always was in my corner man. And that thing dr drifted off to the Drake, yeah, you know, into in, in, into Nikki. Nikki just wasn't rocking with me. <laughs> Nikki, like, like 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 I love Nikki and she loved me, but we couldn't mesh on the on picking production. Okay. Me and her would be in the studio for, for two hours. She'd be like, Chubby, no. <laughs> no. So so I want I want you to know, uh, to the people out there, the Maverick, how did you get into that with Gene Robeson and Gene Nelson at the time? Well. That was, because at that time, these people don't know this, right? Yeah. They don't know that you you changed the game of management. Yeah, so what happened was uh, probably around t early 2007, so I came, I started as Wayne's manager in like 04, 20 years ago. Shit, 20 years ago now. Um, it took me, you know, as we was going and growing, mm -hmm. I knew that I probably reached the ceiling for myself and I needed help. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, let me. I need help to reach out to somebody to help take Wayne to the top. I'm, you know, you know, I just, and it just so happened, we were standing, I was in L.A., Standing outside the W Hotel, he was talking to somebody I knew. G was G Robeson. G Robeson, yeah. And he was like, "Man, I heard about you. I was looking for you. I was like, man, I was looking. Somebody told me about you too. You know, G had Kanye at the time from the beginning, and Kanye was hot already. A couple pla Shout platinum G. albums. Robeson. And um, you know, and uh, uh, and I know, like I say I'm still by myself. You know, what I'm saying without a real team, but I knew that I needed to go away. So me and G, the next day we met up. We might have sat and talked for a couple hours. What I realized was, you know, shit, that we had the same, basically, you know, the same spirit and philosophy on how we looked at business and the type of people we are. We kind of hit there. We've been, shit, partners for 17 years now. So right. that was, so he had Kanye, I had Wayne. That's where it started. The next artist that literally came and said, Taz, can you make me a star was Drake. You know what I'm saying? I was recruiting Drake for Young Money. I didn't even I didn't even expect to manage another person. You know, because right. I was only looking out for my my best friend, which is Wayne. So I didn't even expect to do anything else. So mm -hmm. Drake came, and then shit, Nikki and Nikki came over, and and the rest. I mean, still yeah, co-managing Lil Nas X. Now we had Lil Nas from the beginning. Uh, uh, we co-managing uh, Ice Spice with James. G yeah. doing a lot of yeah, that. Yeah, shout out to James, man. That's uh, my little So dude. Gene and everybody, like, G had all brought that whole team. Al Branch, Gene, Al they Branch, were all working. Man. They were all working with G. I didn't have, it was just me solo for yeah. real. So that that gave me a structure. And then we and then Sean G came over with us. He brought Jill Scott and Roots. Sean G, president of mm. Live Nation Urban now. So, you know, so we formed this... Voltron or wow. or, or, or uh, which, the Avengers, yeah. you know what I'm saying, of, of, you know, and what they, we understood at that point at labels when they were switching from CDs to digital was, like, they're making cuts and shit. Now nah, they was doing that then, tw like, like 17 years ago because they couldn't figure out, you know, technology. We wanted to be in-house and make sure mm. we had all our services right. for our clients right in-house so we didn't have to rely on a label or an agency we did all our deals, all the commercials, Sprite commercials, Drake, all the things yeah. you see. Yeah. Like that was us doing and building our artists and their brands. Black black owned management company, man. Yes. That's right, man. Young brothers from the hood, man. Yeah. And so, you know, G. Robinson, man, that's my guy, man. Shout out to Billy Bathgate. He gonna yeah. laugh when he sees that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he used to manage Billy Bathgate. That really? Was his, that was his first artist. That's crazy. Billy Bathgate, Jewels and them was in the group. G. Robinson managed all of them. I did not know that shit. Yeah. He didn't tell me that. That's something I didn't know. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, G. Robinson. You know, G. my man from back in the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Hip Hop. You yeah, know Hop I mean? too. Hop yeah. was there too. Shit. Yeah, Hop was know. right there. Hop we was call there it, too. We, we, we Hop was in that same meeting too. Yeah. In the beginning. We, call him the, we call him the Yola. Yeah. He's the Yola. He's yeah. the, he's the sensei Hop. of music. When we, when, we, when, we, when we can't think about a song, you send it to Hip Hop. Yeah. And if Hop says, yeah, it's a go. Yeah, and it's a go. I mean, even my A and R ear, what they did was they made things make sense to me. Yes. you know what I'm saying. So He's I, the, he is I the knew, A and R. I knew. A and R is I knew. I was like, I felt like I had an ear, and I felt like I, 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 you know, 
could identify great records and based off of uh you know just my ear but G and Hop made it yes. all make sense. They was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right thinking this way. You know what I'm saying? That that yeah. was our specialty, bro. We had, you know, our and our process. I yeah. think I tell everybody. I love that team right there. You know, yeah. it's like certain teams that, that I look up to. I, I look up to that kind of team that you that y'all did right there because I understand if the artist is if, if the artist can match y'all expertise, it's a win. Yeah. People don't realize that the artist got to match what y'all bring to the table too. You know, yeah. it's just not y'all bringing everything to the table and the artist doesn't understand that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you got any advice out there for these kids, man, you know, what would you tell them moving forward in this era of music? I mean, for me personally, what always worked for me is uh, originality. How do you, you know, what this era has, has, has did was it's definitely oversaturated the space because people have a lot of outlets to put out, to put out music. So the thing is... You know, putting words together really don't impress me. How can you, what's, what you're gonna do to separate yourself from the pack? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily have to deal with lyrics. It could be how you look, it could be a money bag coming with a uh, uh, uh it could be an ad lib. Right. You know, what are you gonna do to stand out that's gonna separate you from doing what a lot of people could do? We start putting words together with our inertia rhymes or ABCs and one, two, three. So that really doesn't impress me, you know? How, you know, when in this era, what are you going to do to have some type of originality and separate right. yourself? So, yeah, you yeah, heard that from the wise words from Cortez Bryant, man. It's what he's looking for. So, you know, take these words from us, man, and, you know, put it into your music, into your craft, and, and, and blend it in, man. You know what I mean? And uh, I just want to let people know out there, man, this is Ain't Our Live, and this is Cortez Bryant, man. This is a, a real manager, man. He take his time out to come on the show and talk to you, man, and enlighten y'all people out there, man. This ain't he, he ain't get paid for this. Eh? He did nah, this out of love. for my brother, man. Stop you it, know? dog. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. You know, what I mean? I, hey, hey, man. This question I do want to I want to say mm -hmm. to you. You're a person that made money off of music, right? Yep. You've made money off music. Yep. How do you stay wealthy off music? In the day, in this day and era, what's the what's the next step? Well, I had to, you know, what what I had to identify is, you know, uh, hip hop has been the largest genre in the world for the last probably seven years or so, seven eight years maybe, you know, and being a uh, uh, the blueprint, no pun intended, name my company, but being the blueprint of these artists and understanding culture, you have to understand that that's power. So I had to and know that music is everywhere. Right. Music is everywhere. Music lies everywhere. I just left this meeting. I was late for this meeting just because of all these <laughs> endeavors. I have nah, a, right on to time, kill man. a company, you know what I'm saying? So I had to understand that, you know, these people want access to us because they don't know how to connect the dots, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, it's not like I'm reinventing the wheel. It's guys like Steve Stout who learned this a very long time ago. That's right. And Al Hamans of the world, you know what I'm saying, learned this a very long time ago. Uh, Clarence Avant's, you know, these people that yep. that I Except saw the blueprint, it was just up to me to own that and step into that and understand the value that I bring, not only for my artists, but being an executive and being a person who knows and know how to touch the streets and connect right. the dots, but also going able to go and speak the language. Right. And these are the rooms to make it make sense to them. That's right. You know, so I've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, the deal flow mm -hmm. on that area, you know, consulting a lot of brands and different companies. And then, you know, what I what I do a lot of, uh, which I think is more important, especially with things like this that you're doing, is connecting the dots so we have the next wavelength of, of executives behind the scenes. Because, yes. you know, I went in my hood maybe like six, seven years ago just chilling on the block, and I was just like... Um, you know, and some of the younger kids, they, some of the kids knew me, you know, their dads and pops and stuff knew me. They, you know, I'm just, I'm just asking them what they know about music. All they knew still at that point, and this was like five years ago, was making a beat, rapping, or singing. That's right. They had no clue, you know, no clue about anything else that was going on. So there was no exposure, you know, so I had to figure out what am I, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? We got the largest genre in the world. We got 90 plus percent of the talent that's creating this look like us, right. but we're still not being trained and don't know where. If you're not in New York or you're not in LA with all the big places at to intern and get in, that's right. you have no idea what you that no looks like behind the scenes. Like. So I went back to Jackson State and built a music business program 
and plan on bringing it to other HBCUs. We got 101 HBCUs. Probably got like five music business programs. So we're not mm. even we're not even trying. You know, I need to start creating a space where we're owning these things and we yeah. are we are owning our IP our content yeah because they, these schools getting they, they, they having funding for all this other stuff yeah. but we ain't getting the funding for, for black music exactly you know what I mean like uh, me, and, me and my lawyer have sat with Clark Atlanta and they was gonna build a studio there and uh, Beach by Dre was gonna do it but they never came up with the rest of the funds so that's what we, uh, me and BMAC sat back yeah, uh, shout out to the Black Music Coalition. Yeah, and they're 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 getting the funds now, so we can do that thing. Like, go give Dr. Dre the money, go build out the uh, these theaters inside these schools, so we get so so we can teach music. Because guess what? At Clark, seventy uh, percent of them came from Clark. Yep. On the music side, on yep. Morehouse. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and and then Usher just went back there. You know, L.A. Reid. Yep. He just back there and just did a a, a show, and so. Uh, that's where we at with it, man. I'm glad you, you you hit that point. That's like a valuable point to these guys. That's what I've been doing in our lives, just trying that's what to teach them. About. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. This. I was just giving the game. So yeah. Somebody told me, said, "Why are you giving the game for free?" I said, "Why not?" Yeah, that's the whole thing. You make everything everything you don't got to charge people, man. Absolutely. You know, I it, I, I tell people all the time, my biggest moments didn't come from me charging somebody. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. My biggest moments didn't come from me putting the fee on it. Yep. True you know, so uh, I'm a firm believer in that. So people don't out there just don't understand. Money's not everything, right? Relationships yep. are. Yep. And the relationships is what got me here, and that's what got Cortez sitting here, and we talking to you people, man, trying to enlighten the game and just play our part, play our role, man. So you know, I'm glad you, I'm glad you stopped by, man. That's love, bro. Yeah, yeah. man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, brother. That's love, dog. Yeah. Love. That's, yeah. Man, and, and listen, we're gonna tune into. To Cortez's new artist, man. Yeah, Randy Savage, Compton Cowboys. Yes. Compton Cowboys. Yeah, that, Compton that Cowboys. Sound crazy. Man. I'm gonna I'm give him the record first. I want, I, you know, I, I trust this man here, so I got it. I got to give him yeah. the chubby baby. I got to yeah. get the chubby baby stamp. Yeah, you know, you, you know, know, what I'm you know, it's so crazy. Man. My son found Jamie Ray, and uh -huh. uh, he signed the Fly Tide now at Epic Records. But he signed them. Him and his homeboy signed them to me in L.A. first. And he's he he does the uh, country music. Really. Yeah, okay. country trap music, the white the white boy. So I said, "Wow, my son was ahead." He also found he he found Twenty One Savage. That's oh, how shit. I signed. Oh, that's how you got. Oh, yeah, my ah. son and Cody Shane. Yeah, Cody Shane went to school with him. That was his classmate. Wow. I signed. His this kid got three artists to sign under his belt. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, my son. <laughs> you got it. It's in his DNA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's in his DNA, man. So, yeah. so we gonna listen to Cortez artists. And my son gonna let me know. He gonna give me the thumbs up. Yeah, give me a thumbs up, man. Uh, thumbs here, 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 here. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, man. Up. So thank, thank God for being a good father and, and, and picking my kids up from school. I got twenty one <laughs> savage out there, deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So hey, man, we signing off, man. This is A and R Live, man. We'll come back in five minutes, man, and, and finish playing these records, man. Cortez Bryant, man. Mega, mega. Mega manager, My mogul in music, man. Trust me, man. This guy's behind the scenes, man. He 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 don't need he he don't need no he don't need no handouts. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother, man. Yes, <laughs> My no, leg, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. We back up and at it. So I want to let y'all know we going back in top of the uh, top of the week. We shutting off early today. But we will be back next week. So whoever whoever didn't get played this week, don't worry about it. We got you next Tuesday. You know what I mean? We gonna get we, we ain't forget you. So everybody out there, just know next week we're gonna be locked back in. And uh that girl man with them hits, we got you. I'm gonna hit you tonight. So so we we, we signing off, man. So Tariq, Riel, Cricket, Jake. Another one in the books, y'all. Let's go. Ain't our life. Peace.